Sole. Holy Holy Sister Veronica wakes up worried. She recalls her conversation with the Reverend informing her that there is no provision for the orphans this Christmas. She requests her taxi driver get her a Sole, a hail and ride bus that was making a trip to Enugu. A driver decides to use his bus for Sole. He agrees to pick the sister for an exorbitant sum. Another lady gives the driver a bag to deliver to Enugu. He asks about the content of the bag but she distracts him by paying extra for the delivery. She gives him a number to contact the addressee but the call fails to go through. She promises it to go through when it arrives at its destination. They commence the trip in a young child grow bus. Along the way, the driver picks more passengers including a skimpily dressed young lady. Why are you tell her? It's not lion fight. Nye, 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 nye. She refuses to put her luggage in the boot because her merchandise is extremely valuable for private purposes. She sits next to Sister Veronica and introduces herself as Justina or Justy Baby. I'm Justina by the way. Justy Baby for short. Mm. They get acquainted. Justina reveals she sells personal stuff while Sister Veronica explains her application for orphanage funds was declined. Along the way, they pick a couple comprising a man and his pregnant wife. The driver tries extorting them, but Justina defends them. As they continue their journey to Enugu, a pastor gets up to preach and demeans Justina for dressing like an ashawo. Those of you that like to dress like prostitutes, let me remind you that the trumpet will soon sound. A professor scolds the pastor for condemning Justina's dressing and they get into an argument. The pastor finishes with an offering collection. Sister Veronica does not give offering. Uh, Reverend Sister, are you, are you not going to give him your own offering too? I have something more important I'm using my money for. Next, a woman markets up aphrodisiac wares. Pastor is unhappy about it. What is this? Eh? You have hustling your own hustle. Why won't you allow me to hustle in my own? You even collecting my money? As they continue the journey, a man stops the bus and tells them there are robbers ahead. The driver changes route, unknown to him that it was a trap. The robbers force them off the bus. They cut away Justina's bag, which looks strikingly similar to the package the driver was tasked with delivering. When the robbers leave, two of the passengers who are siblings mention that a mama on the bus looks familiar. The driver then confirms that the passengers on the bus were all accounted for and continues the journey. Professor suggests that they contribute some money to assist Justina. The little they were able to gather, Justina secretly gives it to Sister Veronica to help the orphans under her care. Pastor refuses to contribute, saying he will not contribute to sin because they don't know the contents of the bag. I cannot donate to sin to this hypocritical bastard. You collected her money when she gave it to you. Then she was not a sinner, right? She gave it to the Lord. Meanwhile, the robbers receive a call from their contact on the bus who tells them that the bag they had stolen was the wrong bag. They stop to verify and find out the bag contained a plethora of sex toys. What is this? I'm gonna penis you. Penis. The robber responsible for the mistake gets wasted. The boss of the robbery gang orders that the contact on the bus ensure that it gets delayed. Julius, one of the passengers, tries stalling the bus. He insists he wants to drop despite the fact that there was no bus stop nearby. Sister Veronica, Justina, and some other passengers do not agree as they had just been accosted by robbers and it was not safe. Professor says they should take a vote and majority agree that Julius should be let out. On dropping from the bus, Julius insists that the luggage the driver was given to deliver was his. An argument ensues between them, and Sister Veronica verifies that the driver was indeed responsible for delivering the luggage. God bless you, Reverend Sister. Go marry well, yeah? Go marry well! Julius takes the driver hostage with a knife. He takes the bag and flees. Malam Yunusa, one of the passengers, took his bow and arrow and was about to shoot Julius when Mama pleads that he not kill him. Shoots Julius in the leg. The passengers tie him up. Sister Veronica says she suspects that Julius has been in communication with the robbers, and so they search his phone. They discover it was true. Having retrieved the luggage, they decide to leave him tied and continue their journey. Mama mentions it was suspicious how the boy had wanted picking that particular bag. They also notice that the bag looks strikingly similar to Justina's stolen luggage. They decide to have a look at the contents. One of the siblings possesses the skill set to pick the lock, which the other passengers find suspicious. They open the bag and discover it was full of US dollars. The passengers get split on deciding what to do with the money. Those who want nothing to do with it, Drop from the bus. Driver, I am sure you hurt my wife. Can you please give her a transport fare so she can go? What are you doing? Look, Ineka, I am fighting for your rights because I'm going with them. The man forsakes his pregnant wife. They all mention what they want to do with their share of the money and banter over it. They get to a police checkpoint. The police gets bribed but they insist they want to search the bus. They were searching specifically for that luggage. At this point, secrets are revealed. <laughs> Prof utilizes a 7 at 1 blow juju move to knock out two of the police. The lock picker and her brother utilize some gung fu skills to dispatch the remaining officers. Oh. 
The tie of the corrupt policeman decided to push on despite the hazards. The prof and two siblings question each other. Prof, prof, what do you do? I am a teacher. They offer the passengers some weapons to defend themselves in case they get knocked out. Jessica declines. Prof was a magic practitioner. He recollects when his father gives him a type of magic that allows him to disappear. They continue with their journey. Along the way, Mama insists she wants to ease herself. They all decide it was time to relieve themselves. The Gonfu girl gets information regarding Mama. <clears throat> she was a notorious kidnapper. They get jumped by armed robbers. Some of the passengers get wasted. Jessica and Sister Veronica are kidnapped. Mala Minusa and Gonfu siblings manage to escape. Professor Seven at One Blow takes out his opponents. Professor meets up with the Gonfu siblings who reveal they are officers with the counterterrorism unit, CTU. They hatch out a plan to get back the money as well as rescue Jessica and Sister Veronica. Jessica and Sister Veronica are taken to the kidnappers' den, which also doubled as a baby factory. It was full of pregnant women and men with sweaty asses. It is revealed that Mama was in charge of the entire operation and the robbers were sent by her. Julius, the young man who had attempted stealing the bag, was her son. Go, leave her back with me. Go! You can't send my son! Professor surrenders to the kidnappers as part of his plan. They get locked in cages. For Professor's plan to work, he requires the pee of a virgin. Look, I have an escape plan. But it is dependent on the quality of the Reverend Sister Shuren. This was because the boss of the robbers possessed a charm of invulnerability that can only be broken with virgin urine. Sister is not a virgin. Sister Veronica is taken by Mama to help deliver a difficult labor. Jessica then offers her pee as she claims to be a virgin. Look, who is a virgin in this place? Sister, I don't understand. Is he your virgin or my virgin? Because I don't know why you're debating my virginity with me. The Gonfu siblings and Malam Yunisa attack the den. Professor seizes the opportunity to take out the guards and free Jessica. He gives scared Jessica a rifle and heads out to look for the money. While searching, he helps rescue the Gonfu siblings and Malam, who were pinned down by the invincible boss. He kills the boss of the robbers. What the fuck? Excuse the virgin to true. Jessica was able to take out some of the bad guys and rescue Sister Veronica. My man kidnapper gets killed. They rescue the hostages. Pro finally finds the money and disappears. We later find out that the driver survived the gunshot as he had hid some of the money under his shirt which protected him. After about a year, Prof spiritually mails the survivors their cut of the money. The moral of this movie is, don't chase big money if you don't have jazz. Thank you for your patience. I was holding my thing. You people are holding go. It's a fair fact now. This comedy was entertaining, full of disjointed conversation, action and a question that remains unanswered. If the money belonged to Mama, why go through the trouble of robbing the boss when she could just pick it up with a phone call? Please like, share and subscribe for more Nolly Crunch content.